right. How we doing? Let's get it going. Flames Nation live on a Monday night. It's Steinberg with you. Uh, from Flames Talk on Sportsnet 960, the fan. Hopefully you're doing well. And it's a 4-1-0 start to the season for the Calgary Flames. Not bad, hey? Lots to like about this start to the season. And not to say it's perfect, but lots to like about the start to the year. On this Monday night to Dallas in first, we've got Jeffrey, Dustin, JF, Bonsoir, uh, Gaurav from Mexico, and Malcolm tuning in from the UK. Yeah, go to bed, Malcolm, but welcome aboard anyway. Um, hopefully you're doing well on this Monday. It's been a nice start to the Flames and a uh, nice start to this uh, flame season, rather, with lots to like about the way things have gone so far. Okay, Flames Nation Live brought to you, as always, by our friends at DoorDash. Uh, the promo code remains FNLiveDB. Go download the app, create the account, and then use the promo code FNLiveDD. We'll get you 25% off your first order and free delivery go download it now flames nation live brought to you as always by our friends at doordash so uh lots to like about the way things have gone so far for the flames certainly lots to like about um the start to the season lots to like about um some of the the special teams work the cadre line's been outstanding there's just there's far more positive than negative in the early stages for the Calgary Flames. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And for them to have their four wins against Carolina, Vegas, Colorado, and Edmonton so far, I think you're going to take that all day, every day. And those are, the, those are the four teams they've beaten so far. And they've beaten three of them in regulation. Their one loss came against Buffalo, and, and there were some frustrations in that loss, understandably so. And I don't even think they were incredible against Carolina, but they bounced back, um, and they found a way to win that game as well so um i think that there is far more positive to the start of the year than there is negative and yet the good news is uh we talked about this on flames talk on monday there's still lots of room to improve i mean you take a look at um some of the chemistry issues is the wrong word but you know vickers and i on flames talk today on monday talked a lot about the the, the Huberto line with Toffoli and uh, and Lindholm and some of the work that needs to be done there. We talked a lot about Markstrom. Markstrom had a huge bounce back game against Carolina, but uh, before that kind of had a so-so start to the season. So there's, there's plenty of good to start the year. And yet in saying that, there's still plenty of room to improve. And at practice on uh, Monday afternoon or Monday morning, I uh, spoke to Blake Coleman in the locker room. And Blake Coleman said, hey, you know what? We're happy with the record. 4-1-0, we'll take that all day. Of course you're going to take the record. But you also know that the five-on-five -five play specifically probably needs to get better at this point. It has not been up to snuff for their standards. You know, last year they were approaching 56% on their shot share. And this year, you're there th through five games. Granted, they're down around 52 percent. That's a little bit less than ideal for this group. And last year, they controlled high danger scoring chances. This year, over at Natural Stat Trick, they're just about even. I think it's 37 for 37 against at five on five. So there's still work to be done. And yet you're really happy about what you've seen so far, I think, if uh, if you're the Flames. The live chat is open. Start getting your thoughts in on the live chat if you're with us. And and I, I wrote over at, at, at Flames Nation today uh, at .ca, I, I wrote about that top line. And, and I just think there are plenty of reasons. I, look, it goes without saying that the line of Toffoli, to Lindholm, Huberdeau at five on five has not clicked yet. They've had moments individually. All three of those guys have had moments. And even as a line, they've had stretches which have been better. But for the most part, they have not been great. They've been ineffective for most of their time. And, you know, I, they just haven't been outstanding. And I just think that there is so much reason to give those guys more time and so much reason to allow those guys to continue to work and, and gel and see if they can find their legs. And, and the way the other lines are playing, like the Kadri line, for instance, the Backlund line has been really quietly great. And there's been some good mo moments from the fourth line. The way the other lines are playing, the fact that they're 4-1-0 to start the season, uh, I think there's plenty of reason to let the Toffoli line with Lindholm and Huberdo just let it continue to work and let them continue to find their legs. Because I, I still believe that they're going to find their legs. I still believe that this has got the potential to be a really good line it's just going to take some time and it might not be it might not be six games it might not be 
16 games. It might not be 46 games. It might take some time, and that's okay if you ask me. I think giving it some time is the way to go, and letting it work itself out is the way to go, even if, you know, even if it does, even if you do start to get a little impatient. Uh, okay, let's uh, get to it on the live chat. Lots of people with us on this Monday night. We'll start with uh, Jeffrey, who was second in, says, Pat, what do you think would help the team play better five on five? Well, I just think, I, I don't even know if there's anything specifically. I mean, they, they've lost some defensive assignments. They've been a little um, loose in, in allowing trailers to get scoring opportunities, kind of that, that uh, high man back, whether it was Rasmus Dahlin against Buffalo, or that there's just been probably too much coming from the high slot and too much from the high slot from trailers on a rush. That, that That's one thing that they could work on for sure when, when you take a look at it from the actual X's and O's standpoint. But for me, it's it's I think their checking game can be a little bit better. They're not as effective so far in getting pucks back when they don't have it. So that's an area that I think they can work on. Um, and that just kind of goes into their defensive game, if you want to call it that, or their checking game. And I think that more shot volume and more time in the offensive zone is something that's going to be a really foc- real, really big focus. But here's the thing. I just think that at this point, not just for the Huberto line, for the team as a whole, at 5-on-5, five five, there's still a lot of adjusting going on. At 5-on-5, five five, there's still a lot of um, there's still a lot of learning curve there because there are new players in key positions, and I just think it's going to take some time. And the fact that it's going to take some time and they have clearly not hit full stride yet, and yet they're sitting there at 4-1-0, and oh, that to me is a pretty resounding positive. Uh, what else we got here um, on our live chat? Armio says, Hubie needs a goal tomorrow. It's going to come at some point for sure. Um, Jim says, happy Monday. Lots to like for sure. Um, sorry, just jumped on me a little bit. Sometimes the live chat does that. Love seeing Lucic dialed in. It was awesome when he pushed the oncoming player back into the bench. The bench that was pretty funny. Uh, Robert says, the first line starting to play better as a line. Watch out when they start to roll. And that is that is very much true. Like when that line starts to get going, just imagine how more formidable this group can be. And if the Kadri line continues to play the way they are and the line with Backlund and Coleman and, and Lewis has been just fine on that line. I know a lot of people are clamoring for a change on the Backlund line, but for now it's working and Lewis has been just fine. He hasn't brought him down necessarily. That line's been really strong with some tough defensive responsibilities and the, the fourth line with Lucic, Ritchie and Rooney has had their moments as well. So with the other lines playing well, I think there's plenty of patience allowed to let that top line, if you want to call it that, the Lindholm line, continue to work their way through things. On that same note, Gorab says, I don't get the Toffoli criticisms. He's a point per game and leading that line. Is there something I'm not seeing? I'm kind of with you. In fact, I'm I'm 100% with you. I really liked what I've seen from Toffoli so far. He's been around it offensively. He leads the team with three goals. He just scored an overtime winner. His goals have come at important times. Um, He's missed on a number of quality opportunities or just missed on a number of quality opportunities. Um, Individually, I've actually quite liked Toffoli's game, and I think there's lots to like about the way he started the season. Yes, that line is still trying to find their way, but I like Toffoli with a lot of what I've seen so far. And he was one of the most fascinating players for me entering the season, mainly because we didn't know if he was going to be kind of in that top line role. And if he was, I just felt like with the goal scoring ability, with the finishing ability, with the hockey sense that he could be a guy that could very easily get back to that 25, 30 goal range once again. Like what, he's a five-time 20 goal scorer already, so it's not like he's never, he scored 20 last year combined between Montreal and Calgary. But I just, it, it feels like he could be a guy that could get back to the more more the higher end of the 20s this year if he stays on that line. And I've really liked the way he started the season. I think he's been a nice, uh, I think he's been a nice fit on the power play. I think he's looked good at times on that line. And I think that's only going to continue as well. So I'm with you hundred percent on that one, Gorev. I've quite liked him. Um, JF says, forget about Kadri, Huberto, et cetera. Richie's the MVP so far. We all know how I feel about Brett Richie. If you've listened to Flamestock on Sportsnet 960 at all, you've heard me stand for Richie just uh, just a little bit. Um, Brooks says, top line looks good so far defensively. Offense is coming. Number one power plays fire right now, so that's a good sign. 
for the top line players as well. And yes, you know, having those guys all on the power play, the number one power play, I think is going to help add to the chemistry as well. Um, Kelly asks, do you think Rooney's the best fit for the fourth line? And Jim chimes in and says, I'd like to see Rizicka instead of Rooney. You know, and this is not a knock on anybody. Um, this is specifically not a knock on Rizicka, but I have not minded Rooney at all. I mean, nothing spectacular and nothing that's going to blow you away, but he's the fourth line center. You're not expecting him to blow you away. He's uh, played with speed. I think for the most part, that line's been responsible uh, uh, defensively. They've created more offense than I think we all expected them to. I, I don't mind Rooney. I, and, and the reason I like him there is because he does add a little bit more speed to that line. And that's not to say Ruzicka is a poor skater or anything like that. I just, I think the the pace that Rooney plays with helps that line. Uh, Richie's been, uh, obviously, uh, he's he's been a standout with a couple goals he scored. Really, that line's had the one bad game. They were really, they, they really struggled against Buffalo. Otherwise, they've been pretty solid, all things considered. So, I, I haven't minded Rooney. I'm fine with him in that 4C position. I do think at some point Rizicka will get a chance, whether it's by injury or just looking to shake things up. Maybe it's on the second half of a back-to-back -back later on in November. I do think Rizicka is going to get an opportunity at some point, but in my opinion anyway, nothing that Rooney has done has played himself out of that situation. But that's just me. Um, what else we got here? Robert suggesting, uh, I still think Pelche will play on the third line this year. He would learn a lot playing with Backlund and Coleman. That may be the best third line in the NHL. I'm not sure. I mean, Pelche did not look ready to be in the NHL during training camp in the preseason. And that's not a knock on him. He's a second year professional and sometimes it takes time. So there's nothing wrong with the fact that he wasn't ready. I just don't know if we're talking about him being ready at any point this season, at least in Daryl Sutter's mind. So I like Pelche as a prospect. I think he's got a bright future, and I still think he's going to factor into this team down the road. I just don't know if it's going to be this season. I, I would, this is just me, Robert, but I think they make a trade and acquire an additional kind of top nine, middle six winger before a guy like Pelche would become a full-time option there. That's just a guess, uh, but I, I think that the... And, that, and maybe it does happen. Maybe Pelche is so good with the Wranglers, it has to happen. But right now, if I were to guess, that's the way that I would uh, be looking. I think that probably his best, the, the best bet would be them going to make a trade at some point. Uh, Brooks also suggesting Zeri's next in line um, in that respect. And, and Zeri coming off two goals on Saturday. I've, I've not seen a ton of the Wranglers play. Um, I saw them a little bit in their two home games. I didn't get to catch any of the action over the weekend in Colorado, but Zeri had a couple of goals against the Eagles on Saturday night in the Wranglers' first win, and apparently was uh, was pretty good. So, uh, And Zeri was one of the standouts at training camp, and I think that there is a chance that he might be the next guy in line in that regard. So we'll see. Um, Jim says, I think Matthew Coronado will have a better chance cracking this lineup before Pelche. I don't know. Um, Coronado has a full year in college that he's going to play, and then a decision is going to be made after that as to what happens. What will be really interesting is, so let's say that Coronado's season ends before the regular season comes to an end. Where does he fit? on this roster like if the flames are looking to be a stanley cup contender i just don't know if there's even a spot for matt coronado on the roster this year maybe he signs and goes on the eight goes the ato route and goes to the wranglers and starts playing pro hockey there maybe that's kind of, that's what that's what happened with jankowski if you remember that jankowski after his fourth year at providence i believe it was um came out of college signed a contract that kicked in the following year but then joined either Abbotsford or Stockton. I don't even remember who it was at that time. I think it was Stockton, but whatever. He went and joined the American League team on an ATO for the rest of the season and then joined the Flames as a professional the following year. Maybe that happens, but that's going to be very curious. That's just a, that's like a, that's an April, March, April Calgary Flames issue, not a right now issue, but Coronado, very highly touted prospect. One of the, you know, when you're talking Zeri, Pelche, Wolf. Coronado, those are kind of the, the top tier Flames prospects. Maybe Jeremy Poirier enters that conversation. We'll see. A lot of people talking about the mess that is the Vancouver Canucks. 
I am fascinated to see what happens there, friends. I really am. I don't know if, like, right now, somebody's suggesting, well, if there's a fire sale in Vancouver, go after JT Miller. No thanks. Not a great start to the season. A, seven more years on that deal. B, like, that's a no, especially with the long-term deals that the Flames have committed to already. I'm more in the no thanks motel when it comes to JT Miller. You know, other names that could come available, depending on what Vancouver wants to do, a little bit more interesting. Miller, with that contract, I'm probably a no on that one now, uh, even though he's a good hockey player. Nobody's dis- nobody's disputing that even with his tough start to the season. But I don't know if I'd be super interested in taking on that contract right now. Um, on, on the Flamestock postgame show, following the win on Saturday, somebody suggested, well, would you, would you trade? I think it was... Um, I think it was Dubé and Pelche. Would you go Dubé and Pelche for Josh Anderson in Montreal? And, and on the postgame show, I said, no, I, I, I don't think that's the, the way to go. I, I think, you know, the way that Dubé is trending, Dubé has taken a huge step this year in his confidence, the his his ability with that shot. He's driving to the middle more, more often. So I'm not I'm not eager in uh, on on moving Dylan Dubé at this point. Like if you're Dylan Dubé is in this team's top six and on merit, not just because he's there on merit, he's in this team's top six. So I'm not, if I'm the flames, I'm not looking to be moving a guy who's already in my top six to supplement. If, if I'm making a trade for a forward at some point between now and the trade deadline, I'm looking to add another top nine forward or middle six forward without subtracting one. So I, I would not be moving Dubé in a move, in a move like that. So, and anyway, that was just one thing that came up on the Flamestock postgame show. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, and, and I really, really like the way Dylan Dubé's trending. He is having a great start to the season. And boy, does he look like he has taken, uh, he has taken a really, really big step going into this year. Five, year. five games in, I get that. But boy, has he looked good early on. And if this continues from Dubé, I, I don't think there's any doubt. After he's coming off a career season last year, I think we're talking about another career season point-wise for him if this continues. That's how good he's been early on. Great stuff on the live chat, everybody. Thank you very much for being along on this Monday night. As we are always brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. One more time, go download the app, create the account, and then use the promo code FNLIVEDD for 25% off your first order and free delivery. That's thanks to our friends at DoorDash who bring you this each and every time. That'll do it for Flames Nation Live on this Monday. Have yourself a great rest of your Monday. Enjoy the Flames and the Penguins on Tuesday night. We'll talk to you again later on this week. Uh, Flames Talk is 4-6 to six on Sportsnet 960 The Fan, and uh, that'll uh, do it for me. Um, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Have a great rest of your week. This has been Flamestock brought to you by DoorDash. Bye, everyone.